Okay, let's take for example, we're landing today on runway 26 right in Vancouver and the winds are 290 degrees at 20 knots. If you take runway 26 right and you put the zero at the end, that's 260 degrees and the wind is 290 degrees. So the difference between the two is 30 degrees and the wind is 20 knots. So the first thing you want to do is to enter the graph from the wind angle. So the wind angle is 30 degrees and the wind speed we have is 20 knots. If we first enter from the wind angle, you draw the line out and then you follow the arc for the wind. There's 20 knots. Now all you have to do is draw a vertical line down to the bottom of the chart. So let's draw this line down. We come up with a crosswind of 10 knots, but also the minimum CRFI we need to safely land in this runway is going to be 0.3. Ideally, you have even more than that because 0.3 is not a lot. Hopefully they are doing snow clearing in progress and it improves better than 0.3 and you'll have better braking action. But this is a nice, quick and easy way to determine the CRFI you need. Now let's take a look at another example. Sometimes what happens in real life is you only know the CRFI and now you have to determine what's the maximum crosswind you can take based on the CRFI. You kind of have to work backwards. And this is very common on some of the exams as well. So let's say, for example, we're still landing on runway 26 right in Vancouver, but this time the winds are 300 degrees. And we have to determine what's the maximum wind we can take, especially crosswind. So if you take 26 right, that's 260 degrees. The winds are coming from 300 degrees. That's a 40 degree wind angle. So like before, we want to enter the chart from the wind angle, so 40 degrees. And now I would just draw the line out. Next, what you want to do is to draw the line upwards from the CRFI until it intersects the 40 degree line. And I do apologize, that's the straightest line I could draw. So now we can see the maximum crosswind recommended based on the CR5.5, it'll be 25 knots. And the wind speed, if you follow this arc all the way out, will be roughly 38 knots. There you have it. There's two ways to go about this problem. One, they will give you the wind speed and direction, and then you have to determine the minimum CRFI needed for landing. And the other, they will provide you the CRFI, and you have to determine what's the maximum crosswind you can handle.